Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Skodo Boyo playing Vanilla Minecraft 1.8.7 PC Edition uh, and this video is going to be a showcase of, a, of this giant AFK wool farm here. Um, I've had the design of this kicking around in my head for a while, just uh, finally decided to put it down. Uh, it's really big, it's really expensive, uh, but it's also very, very efficient. And uh, maximizing the efficiency, trying to see how high I could push the efficiency of AFK wool farming, uh, that was really the goal of this. Um, uh, so um, I, I wasn't really too concerned about expense, although I will address some of the expense, uh, uh, how it could be made cheaper uh, uh, a little bit later. Uh, first, a, a quick rundown. So the uh, the farm is com uh, uh, comprises 48 cells. Uh, here's one of the cells here. You can see a line of sheep down there. Uh, and uh, I go past the sheep shearing them uh, on a, a, in a minecart. Uh, and uh, I just continue all the way down past six cells of sheep and then all the way back uh, and you can see this uh, um, kind of a zigzag pattern in uh, in this line of hoppers that's above here. Uh, as I go through I hit several points at which uh, shears are dispensed uh, and if I have uh, burned through a pair of shears I'll pick up the new one. Uh, if not it will get reclaimed uh, so I'm not actually wasting shears, but uh, it ensures that I have a pair of shears at, on me at all, uh, almost at all times. Uh, and um, the size of the farm means that it takes me about four minutes to travel through the whole thing. Uh, so by the time I get back at the, at the first cell uh, of sheep here, uh, many of these, most of them will have already regrown their wool. So. Um, that's where the efficiency comes from, and, and it is really efficient. Um, I'm clocking in at more than 14,000 blocks of wool per hour. Uh, that means filling a double chest of wool in less than 15 minutes, so, uh, so pretty good. Um, now, this farm uh, has 48 uh, cells in it. Each cell has 13 sheep, and that means that there is more than 600 sheep here. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons why uh, my game isn't just lagging like mad uh, is because each of the sheep, uh, you can see here, is encased in a glass block. Um, uh, the uh, sheep has uh, only one block of space above it, uh, and it's completely surrounded by solid blocks on all sides. Uh, so that means that none of these sheep are actually really trying to path anywhere because there's nowhere for them to go. They're completely stuck. Uh, a couple of other the other things that I've done uh, to eliminate lag here. Um, first, I've uh, set my particles to minimal. Um, uh, that uh, uh, that helps quite a bit. Uh, and also, you can see this uh, giant hopper pipe that snakes across the entire top of the farm. Uh, there's one on top, and there's one of these uh, on the bottom. It's a bit hard to see. Um, let me come over here. Here's part of it. Uh, so I have these two uh, giant uh, horizontal hopper pipes, uh, and hoppers will check every game tick uh, for items uh, above them to suck in, unless they have a container on top, and, and that's what all these furnaces are doing. They're basically just acting as containers, uh, so this enormous number of hoppers isn't trying to uh, check for um, items in the world above them every game tick. Uh, they'll still be tra uh, checking the, uh, uh, the furnaces, uh, which are all empty, uh, but I'm assuming that the check for um, uh, testing whether there's something in a container is uh, much, uh, um, uh, requires much less computation than the check for determining whether there's a free-floating item above it. Uh, so that's how I've uh, mitigated the lag here, um, and that's, um, that's why things are still pretty smooth. Um, uh, uh, and uh, the efficiency of the farm really requires uh, this number of sheep. Um, now, it also requires that the number of sh that the um, sheep uh, be growing their wool back relatively quickly, uh, and that means that the grass underneath them, uh, once they eat it and, and um, uh, convert it to dirt, it needs to grow back in the grass really, really quickly. So. Uh, first, addressing the uh, uh, the glass. Um, so here's uh, one sheep here that's encased in a glass block. 
Uh, it's possible to do this in survival mode. Let me uh, get another sheep here. Um, by trapping a sheep in a one by one hole and then pushing, uh, using a piston to push a glass block into the hole. Now that sheep is trapped uh, within the glass block. Uh, and the, the fact that the sheep are stuck inside glass blocks doesn't actually have any effect on whether or not they can eat the grass underneath the glass block. They will still uh, eat the grass under the glass block uh, just as normal. Uh, let's see if one of them are going to... Yep, there we go. There's one, and it just ate the grass block, uh, or ate the grass on the grass block underneath the glass that it's stuck in. Uh, you can also um, uh, trap the sheep in glass uh, by pushing a glass block into their head. Um, this sheep is actually stuck inside a glass block. Um, let's get a sheep over here. And um, we can trap that one as well in the same way. Uh, it is now uh, <laughs> stuck inside a glass block. Um, these two different mechanisms of trapping sheep inside glass have different implications for shearing uh, sheep and collecting wool. Um, for a variety of reasons, uh, I'm, uh, I've done it this way, although you do have to be careful uh, because I'm going to be using water streams to wash away the wool, or at least pulses of water streams. Uh, and um, in this situation, if, uh, uh, if the water is left there for too long, the sheep actually will drown. So it has to be relatively short pulses. Uh, so that's how uh, the sheep get into the glass in the first place. Uh, obviously, it would be really tedious to do for 600 sheep, uh, but it is possible. Um, as for the grass, um, so the sheep are going to be standing on this block right here. Uh, and once they eat the grass and convert this block to dirt, I want it to grow back to grass as soon as possible. And that means surrounding this block uh, with as many grass blocks that can, be, uh, that can act as source blocks for spreading grass. Uh, so there's eight down here, eight in the middle, and, and nine up top. So th th there's a maximum of 25 grass blocks uh, that can spread grass uh, to this block here once it gets converted to dirt. Um, now, having a configuration like this isn't fantastic, um, and that's because um, I can only stick one sheep in here, or at least uh, I can only shear one sheep in here. Uh, and so I'm willing to sacrifice a couple of grass blocks in order to create a line. Um, here, uh, this block right here uh, is surrounded by 23 glass, grass blocks that can uh, spread grass uh, once that block gets converted to dirt. So. Uh, I'll sacrifice a couple in order to fit more sheep into the farm. Uh, and incidentally, that's why a lot of these uh, AFK sheep farms have this, um, have this style of configuration. It's uh, to maximize the spread of grass uh, in order to make sure that the sheep can grow their wool back as soon as possible. Uh, and um, so each cell of this farm has uh, that kind of a similar shape. Um, all the sheep are standing on these blocks down here on the, um, and they are surrounded by other grass blocks. All of the other grass blocks are basically there just to spread grass as quickly as possible onto these blocks down here where the sheep are standing on. Uh, I've got um, glass in back here to make sure that sheared wool doesn't pop out back here. Uh, so all of the wool that gets sheared from these sheep is either going to land on the glass blocks where the sheep are, or it's going to land on this grass that's in front of the sheep. That's uh, in front of the sheep here. A and uh, uh, then I'll ha hit it with uh, uh, those two lines of blocks. I'll hit with uh, an asymmetric water pulse in order to wash the sheared wool. Uh, over into the hole on the side over here, or a corresponding hole on the side over here. I pass by all of the sheep uh, in a minecart, um, and uh, the speed of the minecart is regulated by um, uh, just regular game mechanics. Um, I, I have a couple of booster rails here to make sure that uh, I, I don't lose too much speed. Uh, but then the speed of the minecart is um, uh, reduced by having the minecart go around a couple of corners uh, and uh, going past some solid blocks here. So I've got a, this fence post is intentionally placed here uh, because it reduces the speed of the minecart uh, just right, uh, as do these border blocks here and uh, all of these uh, bottom half slabs that are in front of the sheep 
they slow the minecart down a little bit as well as keep the wool inside here um, in order to be uh, harvested. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, every time I pass uh, uh, under one of these um, shapes here, a she pair of shears is dispensed. So on either side, uh, I've got a pair of shears being dispensed. Uh, and in particular, I'm concerned about a pair of shears being dispensed as I enter this, uh, uh, this area with the sheep. And then uh, as I exit, um, uh, exit this cell, uh, redstone over here controls this, um, uh, controls this asymmetric water pulse. Uh, it's, um, uh, and that's really where the expense comes in. Uh, the the rails themselves they pretty much all have to be here and um, for, you know 48 times two powered rails that means 96 powered rails uh, I've actually got a few more uh, that's um, that's a considerable number of powered rails um, uh, but not too bad uh, the real expense is uh, is in all of this redstone that uh, controls um, uh, these two water pulses so let me uh, show how that works. Uh, when I pass over this pressure plate with a minecart, um, one water pulse is going to get spread over these two lines of blocks, and, and then uh, it's going to get shut off. So I've got a delay of four seconds uh, that allows um, uh, all of the wool to be uh, pushed, or at least most of it. Uh, there is going to be some wool that doesn't make it all the way over to the hole after four seconds, uh, but that's not really too much of an issue because the... Um, uh, the f it only takes me about four minutes to go around the farm, uh, so I will be hitting this cell again before any of the wool that uh, was sheared the last time uh, despawns. Uh, so it will get hit by another water, pu uh, water pulse and, and pushed into the hole before it despawns. Um, uh, but um, this here doesn't actually need to be exactly four seconds. It can be approximately four seconds. Uh, so you can use any kind of pseudo timer that's cheaper. I've got an example of a, uh, of a uh, four second pseudo timer over here. Um, just uh, inputs there and then it sends an item around into the hopper uh, and uh, that gets um, checked. Well, actually, actually, that's a five second pseudo timer. Uh, let's see. There, put a couple of glass blocks in. Now it should be a four second pseudo timer. So the item gets sent around a little faster with the ice. And there we go. Um, so that that, um, uh, that works out pretty well. It's much cheaper than using all of these uh, all of these repeaters. Um, and um, <laughs> but it's still going to be relatively expensive, and that's because there are 48 of these cells. So any materials that you use to build one of these cells, you're going to have to multiply it by 48 in order to get the total cost. Um, other things that are kind of expensive. Um, uh, there needs to be a way to add shears into this dropper here and this one over here. Uh, and that's what this giant line of hoppers on top is for. It's just piping shears uh, into each one of these dispensing points. Uh, and, uh, uh, and also shears that don't get picked up by the player, um, they're going to get uh, sucked into this hopper here. Uh, and they will need to be reclaimed, and that's uh, I have got a bottom uh, horizontal <laughs> bottom horizontal hopper pipe uh, that's also really really large. Um, both of those uh, hopper pipes could be replaced by um, water streams, uh, which would make it much cheaper. Uh, and then I also have hopper pipes uh, for collecting the wool, uh, which again could be done with water streams. Uh, to make it much cheaper. So that, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, this is really most of the necessary expense. Uh, and this uh, delay, this uh, four second delay here could be, uh, uh, could be mitigated with a, a, a pseudo timer. So uh, each cell, not so bad, or at least it can be made not so bad in terms of expense. Real problem is 48 of them. Uh, and uh, so all the uh, the expense of the farm is going to come from just the sheer number of these cells that exist in the farm. Uh, as I mentioned, each uh, each farm has 13 sheep, uh, and um, and they're all just wired together so that I zigzag back and forth uh, from this point over here uh, all the way down to the ending point over there, and then I've got a long track of rails that bring me back up to the starting point. Uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much how it works. 
So um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and give a quick demonstration here. Uh, let me just go into uh, game mode zero. Hop in the minecart and you just look at this button and hold down the uh, use key and and, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, I, I'll be sent along in front of all of these sheep uh, and uh, the speed of the minecart is regulated uh, in order to make sure that uh, I'm going as fast as possible without missing too many sheep. Every once in a while I miss one sheep as I uh, come around the corner, uh, that little U-shaped bend in the rails. Um, and not too much of an issue though. And uh, sometimes the minecart is going a little bit slower than necessary. That just has to uh, has to do with the way in which um, velocity is periodically computed in, in the game. So, uh, but um, it's pretty efficient. Uh, uh, again, a lot of the efficiency has to, uh, comes from the fact that there are just so many sheep in this farm. Uh, and uh, even though it is possible to uh, stick them in these glass uh, blocks in survival mode, it would be uh, it would be a big job to do that for as many sheep exist uh, as exist in this farm. Uh, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'm not going to uh, go through the entire farm here, um, but uh, oops, let me change back to creative mode here. Uh, I will include a, uh, a world download in the, in the description. Um, uh, you can uh, try this out for yourself. Uh, maybe use some of the uh, mechanics here uh, if you want to build a really efficient sheep farm. Um, <laughs> again, we're talking really super efficient. Um, uh, more efficient than, uh, uh, than what can be handled by a single hopper. So um, I actually have uh, two different hopper pipes uh, coming into this little collection area because uh, a single hopper pipe wouldn't be able to handle the volume. So uh, it is uh, it is really efficient, um, and um, I, I think it can be made so that it's not super expensive. There are a couple of different things that you can do here. Uh, again, I mentioned you know replacing all the hopper pipes with water streams. Um, uh, you could also stack the uh, the different lines. Uh, so there's a line of six cells here, a line of six cells here. You could stack these vertically. Um, that would uh, help reduce the cost of some of the uh, dispensing and collection. Um, uh, so there are there are ways in which to mitigate the expense, um, uh, but uh, but it is still really really big. Uh, no matter uh, no matter how you slice it, uh, it would be an enormous effort to actually build this farm in a survival world. It is doable, um, but um, uh, but a lot of work and and still pretty expensive. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if uh, again I will include a world download in the description. Uh, but if you have any questions or suggestions. Uh, please leave a note in the comments.